Guess I won't be going back that way. I guess that isn't a draft. Bishop Mandible. What in the world is he up to? Hmm, repair costs must be spiralling. These grave markers are forged from solid bronze. He's fast asleep. It might help to point. He's fast asleep. What's that? Your music woke me up. Oh, sorry. Oh, not to worry. I'm Rusty, Rusty Nailbender. I'm Bobbin Threadbear, of the Weavers. Weavers, eh? Our folk are blacksmiths. I'm supposed to be getting firewood for the master, but this plateau is being picked cleaner than a new blade. Come over here. That's us down there, the forge. That's what we call it. I've heard you weavers don't get out much. What's your business here? I've been looking for a flock of swans. Swans? No. No swans around here. Oh, say, all this talk has made me sleepy. A real pleasure, though. Oh, let me know if you find your swans. Oh.
Hello, young nail bender. About time you were coming home. Stoke's been looking for you, and he ain't real happy. You better get in there right now. Well, it's about time, you lazy idiot. I sent you out four hours ago for firewood, and you bring me back one scrawny stick. If your father weren't the foreman, I'd toss you in the furnace. You're just like the use downstairs with the bishop right now. If that fire goes out and the cleric's swords don't get done... I'm sorry, I had a bit of trouble. Perhaps you'd like to offer your confessions to the bishop in person. I'd be happy to arrange it. Now give me that stick! I'm done dealing with the likes of you, Nailbender. I'll be back, and you'd better hope the furnace doesn't go out. What a mess. I can't do anything without my distaff. That straw looks awfully comfortable, though. Oh, I must have a sleep draft woven into it. Imagine frightening a poor defenceless old thing like me, Cor. Well, I may not be much good with fire, love, but I still enjoy the taste of tender, firm young meat. One blasted stick of wood left, curse that lad! Ten thousand swords to forge, and the furnace is about as cold as my chances for promotion. I don't believe this. Real nice of that weaver kid. Just wait until his turn comes. I'll be waiting for him on the outside. Oh dear, that means trouble. If Elder Atropos saw his star feeding so he'd have something to say about it. You, you could be sure of that. Careful now, old bird. Let's not singe the feathers. The final blade is even now in the hands of our most skilled blade shaper, Your Excellency. How's it coming there, Edgewise? I'm just putting the edge on the last sword, sir. Good to hear it! No slacking off now! Let's get it finished! You share with me a historic moment, Foreman. The forging of the Ten Thousand Sword marks the end of our preparations. How much longer must I wait? The steel will ring out its final defeat, sir. Not much longer now. Very good, then. 
carry on. What evil is this? A witch's curse has twisted the final blade. A curse, Edgewise? I think not. It would take more than a mere witch's curse to ruin my plans. You there! Could it be that this little prank is of your doing? Yes? Well then, I would be honored to have you as my guest at the cathedral. I know some other curses that may amuse you. I'm getting really tired of this. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Bishop Mandible, trans-ultimate apostle of the anti-secular conclave of clerics. I know. Am I expected to kneel? Silence, you impudent punk! This is my assistant, Cobb. Charmed, I'm sure. And you require no introduction. Your cloak and staff betray your origins. But I must say I'm surprised to find you here. It's been quite a long time since any weaver bothered to leave that dreary little rock you call home. <laughs> Loom. <laughs> so provincial. I can't help but wonder what impelled you to leave it now. His Excellency asked you a question. I know. I'm ignoring it. Ah, recalcitrance. I see. Shall I fetch the uh, instruments of persuasion, Master? Please forgive my assistant his eagerness. I fear Cobb is not very worldly. He does not understand the dangerous power of a weaver. Dangerous? Your reverence. Him? Quite dangerous indeed, my dear Cobb. In fact, he could burst this flimsy iron cage open with hardly a second thought. That's impossible, most exalted one. I inspect the locks personally every fortnight. Observe and learn, then, for even now your prisoner plans his escape. See, Cobb? An elusive breed, these weavers. Fortunately, however, they're quite helpless without their weaving sticks. That distaff will never work for you. Oh, no, my young friend, you're quite wrong about that. Come, let me show you why. Consider the common graveyard. There, the boundary between the living and the dead is indistinct. Every graveyard's like that, so... Now, imagine what might happen if this delicate boundary were to be somehow breached. Torn open, so to speak. It's not that simple. You can't just rip the pattern apart like an old rag. But it is that simple, my boy, and I can. I have only to lift this rod, and the legions of the dead will stream forth onto the plain of the living. A vast army of the dead, nourished by the shepherd's flocks, armed by the artisanship of the blacksmiths, guided by the glassmaker's sphere. All under the spiritual leadership of one supreme commander, me!